the killing of Palestinian civilians is not a collateral effect of the war. This Israeli assault relies by design on mass and indiscriminate killing of civilians. The humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza is not the consequence of a war. It is a tool employed by Israel to pressure people and force them out. The famine underway is not an undesired outcome of the war. It is starvation as a method of war. The collapse of the health system is not an unforeseen result of a war. It is the result of premeditated attacks against hospitals and medical personnel. The indiscriminate killing, the mass arrest, film humiliation of Palestinians, enforced disappearance and abduction, and summary executions aim at terrorizing the Palestinian people as a whole. Mr. President, the world is discovering the true Gaza while Israel is destroying it. They discover as Israel destroys our university and schools that we have one of the highest literacy rates in the world. They discover as Israel destroys our historic mosques and churches that we have religious diversity and a Christian community in Gaza that is an integral part of our history, our present, and our future. The world discovers the name of brave Palestinian journalists and doctors as they learn they were killed. They discover about a young Palestinian generation that was able to be creative and to perform and to try to lead a life in impossible circumstances, only to face death once again. The world discovers human beings who, despite repeated assaults and a decade and a half of blockade, somehow preserved hope, cultivated it, built their homes to, the, to see them destroyed, built them once more, saw them destroyed once more, built them again, built their lives despite loss and suffering from the, within the wounds they were able to rise again, only to face death once again. They found a way back to life only to see death and destruction haunting them once more. Until when? That is what Israel is attacking, hope. That is its greatest enemy. The fact the Palestinian people have not relinquished hope. The ability of our people to resurrect. They want to make sure that Palestinians in Gaza have no homes to return to. They want to make sure they have no life to return to. They want to make sure that life in Gaza is no longer possible. With one aim, what they call voluntary migration. Voluntary. 21,000 people killed half of them almost children. And by the way, we mentioned the children and the women. Many innocent men have been killed. Voluntary migration, the code name for forced displacement. These are the options for Palestinians. Destruction or displacement, death or displacement. Mr. President Netanyahu expressed a few days ago his pride to have prevented the independence of the Palestinian state to have undermined and destroyed the peace accords. He is bragging that he is destroying peace in our region. He is bragging openly that he has been obstructing the chance of peace. And by doing that, he has been undermining the security of both the Palestinian people and the Israeli people. His intentions have always been clear to anybody willing to look. He has been one of the main protagonists of the war for Palestinian geography and against Palestinian demography in the last three decades. Netanyahu's political platform is denying Palestinian existence and rights. His political survivor, survival requires a never-ending and ever-spreading war. Netanyahu continues rewriting history 75 years after the Nakba, saying that Palestine was a wasteland, a wasteland when over one million Palestinians lived in cities and had a cultural life and a political life and life, just life in that, uh, in that land to justify prolonging it, prolonging the Nakba and attempting to finish the job. We have been down the path of negating existence, killing and destroying so many times before. We have been down that path for 75 years. Anybody thinks it's a good idea to continue down that path? Israel announced several times it had handled the Palestinian question. Netanyahu himself told the world a few weeks ago, here in the UN, there was nothing to worry about. Raising a map that had disappeared Palestine altogether. 
Does anyone believe the matter was handled? Does anyone believe that more killing, destruction, and denial of rights will put an end to the matter? Recognition of our existence and of our rights and their respect is the only way towards shared peace and security. That is our goal, shared peace and security. Mr. President, as we approach the new year, 75 years have come and gone, and there is a nation still deprived of its land and of its most fundamental rights, still occupied, oppressed, and killed. Our people have outlasted the massacres before. They will outlast them once again. But those killed will not be brought back to life. Those scarred will never truly heal. The impact of the Israeli massacres in Gaza will be felt for decades. Of course, for the Palestinian people who bear the wounds on their flesh, but also in our region and across the world. And if hope is not restored and freedom does not prevail, no one can predict the next chapter of this tragedy, but everyone knows it will be worse. As the world welcomes a new year, the massacres in Palestine continue, the injustice continues, the suffering continues. How many Palestinian generations will have to suffer before finally being able to live in freedom and dignity and peace, and peace in our ancestral land. We want to stop seeing our Nakba grow and finally be able to see our children grow. Mr. President, I'm honestly shocked to be sitting here today. I'm shocked by the focus of this briefing. I'm shocked by the blatant lies being spread. I'm shocked at the utter dissonance from the reality on the ground. But most of all, I am shocked by this council's willingness to waste its time focusing on such a marginal extremist phenomenon while the entire region is on fire. And the true reason for this raging fire receives complete silence here. Council members, just yesterday morning, rockets were fired from Lebanon at population centers in Haifa and Akko in northern Israel. Two days ago, rockets were fired at the northern Israeli city of Kiryat Shmona. And three days ago, Hezbollah fired guided anti-tank missiles at St. Mary's Church in the Western Galilee, injuring 11 people. Yet, these brazen attacks on civilians, towns, cities, and holy sites do not warrant an urgent briefing here in this council. Do these attacks sound like a mere spillover? Is this violence occurring magically on its own? Is it not clear that genocidal terrorists are seeking to murder Israeli citizens every single day? Every single day. This council is quick to show solidarity with civilians across the Middle East, so long as they are not Israelis. In fact, hardly a week goes by without some meeting regarding the protection of civilians in Gaza, and not a week passes without the UN and its officials calling to shield, shield Lebanon and Syria. So why, when it comes to innocent, innocent Israeli civilians being targeted in northern Israel every day by Hezbollah, Hamas, and other Palestinian organizations, is this council silent? Why have you not condemned the rocket fire from Lebanon, Syria, and Yemen? The situation in northern Israel is reaching a point of no return. Every day, innocent Israelis are under attack. If these attacks persist, Israel will ensure these acts of terror stop. So why have you not spoken up? Why have you not demanded that Lebanon take action to prevent terror attacks being carried out from their territory? Why is it that the UN remains silent in the face of terror only when it is directed against Israel? Israel? 50,000 Israeli civilians were displaced along the northern border because of the Iranian-backed attacks by Hezbollah from Lebanon. These attacks are a flagrant violation of Israel's sovereignty, of international law, and of Security Council resolutions, in particular, 1701. But still, this is a marginal issue, and it is in decline so why has the Council dedicated an urgent briefing to this topic in the midst of a war? 
But if you want to discuss Judea and Samaria, or the West Bank as you call it, despite a war raging in the south and another war brewing in the north, let's talk about the widespread phenomenon that is truly threatening the situation in Judea and Samaria, Palestinian terror. Let's talk numbers. Since October 7th, there have been 1,028 shooting, stabbings, and IED attacks by Palestinian terrorists against Israelis, 1,028. In the same period, there have been 2,118 rock-throwing attacks and Molotov cocktails firebombings by Palestinian terrorists on Israelis. This is the reality. In less than three months, there were over 3,000 Palestinian terror attacks, over 3,000, over 15 times more than the, in, in the incidents of extremist Israeli violence in the same time frame. Throughout 2023, nearly 8,000 Palestinian terror attacks were carried out against Israelis in Judea and Samaria. Yet, according to OCHA reports, these attacks are virtually non-existent. This council is being lied to because for the UN and its agencies, the truth is subjective. This is not only the case regarding Palestinian terror in Judea and Samaria. This is also the case in Gaza and wherever there is Palestinian terror carried out against Israelis. The UN either distorts or ignores the facts regarding Israeli terror victims. The UN is one of the main driving forces for the sick phenomena we are seeing now. From October 7th, atrocity denial to the denial of rape of sec and sexual violence perpetrated by Hamas. The UN is an accomplice of terror organizations and anti-Semites. Mr. President, if this Council's noble cause is to bring peace and security to the Middle East, I suggest it start with the situation at hand, namely Hamas, Hezbollah, their Iranian puppet masters, and all other genocidal jihadists threatening stability in the region. And there is only one solution to ending this war immediately, the war in Gaza. The Hamas terrorists must turn themselves in and release all hostages. This is the only solution, and this is precisely what this Council should be focused on advancing. Can the Council unite to back this solution? Sadly not. The Council cannot even come together to condemn the atrocities of October 7th. It is heartbreaking, heartbreaking to see this Council not taking any constructive steps to end the war in Gaza. But it is particularly heart-wrenching to see the Council's inaction towards freeing our hostages from Hamas. It is shameful that the suffering of innocents, women, babies, the elderly, who were kidnapped from their beds, have become a footnote to this Council, to the Secretary General, to the International Red Cross, and to all UN bodies. I reiterate, calling for their release is not enough. The world must remember them every day. They committed no crime, and now they are locked away in a dark terror tunnel in Gaza. While the UN may choose indifference, Israel will not stop until we bring them home. Our hostages will not be forgotten. The world and the people of Gaza must know their names in order to remember why the war in Gaza is ongoing and will continue until we bring all of the hostages home.